What's going on? We back. Goodfellas Sports TV. Salute. Appreciate everybody for coming through this morning. Make sure you smash the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon button. We'll miss another video or live stream. Now, yesterday, uh, Le'Veon Bell did not report. Or Tuesday, I think he didn't report by the deadline to play this season. Okay, we talked about the loophole his agent found in his new CBA where he didn't have to play this season to get the uh, the third-year franchise tag would mean the Steelers would have to pay him $25 million next year, which they want, or put the transitional tag on him, meaning he can go out there and be a free agent. They would just have the opportunity to match any offer out there. So basically, it sounds like he's going to be free to do what he wants, all right? And it's been a lot of player hating by the players, and people don't understand how how deep it is, okay? You know, a lot of people never probably been part of a unionized shop or unionized uh, employment job, whatever you want to call it. The NFL Players Association, NFLPA, ha is one of the worst unions on the planet, you know, Multi-billion dollar business, and the players are getting, you know, messed over, okay? And since Le'Veon Bell didn't show up, the Pittsburgh Steelers players did not support him. His offensive line talked crap about him, okay? Mad that he wasn't there. They wanted him to be about the team and the team first, but he got franchise tag last year, okay? They didn't want to pay him the deal that he thought he was worth couple weeks later, or a week later, they offered him $14 million. A couple weeks later, Ty Gurley broke the bank, okay? So if he would have signed that deal and Ty Gurley got a bigger deal, he's been he's been in this league longer than Ty Gurley. He's been more consistent than Ty Gurley. He never had the year Ty Gurley had when Jeff Fisher was there, okay? He had really two subpar years. Last year was Ty Gurley's first bounce back year. So... Most people felt that Le'Veon Bell was a better player than Todd Gurley. The Pittsburgh Steelers played Ben Roethlisberger after he went through all that, the allegations of rape and all that, and all the other stuff he went through with the motorcycle. They made sure he got his money, okay? Antonio Brown threw temper tantrums, threw, it, threw his you know, helmet on the ground and cussed everybody out. They made sure he got his money, all right? They made sure he got his money. And you could argue Le'Veon Bell was more important than Antonio Brown because he touched the ball more. Not only could he run the ball, he was one of the best receiving backs or the best receiving back in the NFL. So yesterday, Bud Dupree and a few other Steelers, once Le'Veon Bell was no was no longer going to show up this year, they jacked his locker of his Jordan cleats and went through his cleats. And, you know, it was in a joking manner, okay? That's how people tell you it was in a joking manner and all of that. But guess what? The NFL owners saw weakness. You know, they know the new CBA is coming up. It come it can come up faster than not. If Callan Kaepernick and Eric uh, Reed win their collusion case, the CBA is abolished, it's broken. They have to negotiate a new CBA deal, all right? And they see these players not bonding together. Anytime one of your union brothers may be on the Raiders, the Lions, the, the Giants, the Jets, it may be on your own team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, as a union Regardless over anything, anything over anything else, you supposed to support that brotherhood, even over the team concept, you know, even over winning, you want to support that brother. And why do you want to support that brother? Because it's a union. It's about what's best for everybody as a whole. OK, if he wins, we all win. And when you don't show him that support, when it's time for Bud Dupree to get his money or when it's time for Antonio Brown to get his money when it's time for David DeCastro to get his money, when it's time for these dudes to get their money, you know, and they get French ties and they want to hold out, ain't nobody going to feel sorry for them, okay? The NFL Players Association, all them unionized guys need to be supporting Le'Veon Bell, period. Period. It ain't like he no scrub. It ain't like he asking for something he did not deserve. You know, you're not supposed to say anything negative. You're supposed to show strength and numbers. And they didn't do that. They handled it the wrong way. And this is why the NFL owners will get over on them every time. Not only do your average NFL player live paycheck to paycheck and be broke after their career, which is facts. But they don't have they don't bond together. They don't stand. They don't they don't hold their ground. Last CBA 
Claire's went broke. They had they had to take the deal that was on the table to offer to them. They took a sorry deal. So people don't understand how deep it is. People say, oh, was just joking. Le'Veon Bell, you know, didn't come to the team. He did. What you talking about? The team disrespected him. Gave him a low ball offer. A week later, Ty Gurley signed the biggest uh, running back deal um, in, in, in the history of NFL. And you ain't telling me Le'Veon Bell ain't put more uh, years together than Ty Gurley? You telling me Le'Veon Bell ain't won a playoff game before Ty Gurley? You telling me Le'Veon Bell ain't a better running back than Ty Gurley? Ty Gurley did it for one year. Le'Veon Bell been doing it for years and years. For years and years he's been doing it. No disrespect to Ty Gurley, really, really good running back. A ain't no, ain't no, ain't no brotherhood there in the NFLPA. It's the worst union shop in the world. The worst. You can't find no worse. The Maury Smith, the head, the president, whatever you want to call him, terrible. Terrible. If you say, it's, you know, he he disrespected the team. No, the union comes before the team. Trust me, because when it's time for all them dudes to get their payday. Or when it's time for them dudes to write a grievance versus Pittsburgh Steelers, or when it's time to try to get that uh, franchise tag, which is one of the worst and and nasty and malicious things in the, in the sport in the, in sports history, the franchise tag. When it's time to get that abolished, that team come first. The union come first because that franchise tag was never in the CBA and they stuck together and got that out the CBA. We wouldn't even be in this situation. These dudes talking about. The team union come before a team. The union is a, is a bond across the National Football League. You ain't never supposed to step on your union brother back or step on his toes, right, wrong, or neutral. You supposed to support him, and, and that's the problem not only in the NFL but in the black community. Right or wrong, Mexican people riding for their people. Right or wrong, whites and Caucasians riding for their people. Right or wrong, Puerto Rican people riding with their people. Right or wrong. NBA, right or wrong, they union riding with them. MLB, Major League Baseball, right or wrong, they play they union riding with them. NFL? No. Nah. Players gonna step on your foot. Oh no, you ain't here, you know, F him and you know, we trying to win the championship. Hey, look, man, we trying to we trying to change the CBA. We trying to do what's right. We talking about families at stake here. We talking about the history of the game as they we talking about the next generation being able to make a fruitful living. I heard Eric Dickerson say he was talking to uh, Deacon Jones and, and Deacon Jones said, OK, let me tell you how deep this is. Deacon Jones just passed away a couple years ago, maybe a year ago. One of the most prolific pass rushers in history played for the Rams. OK, he said his pension back in the 70s, I believe. He said his pensions were 80s. His pension was 250 bucks. Eric Dickerson said his pension was $2,500. 250 bucks for somebody that built the foundation of the National Football League, or helped build the foundation of the National Football League. It's $2,500. It's people that, that, that retired from Chrysler and Ford and GM that get more than $2,500 plus profit sharing incentives after they re retire, another incentives. $2,500 and $250. Let that sink in how messed up this union is. Don't respect their retirees, man. Don't respect their current players. This is the NFL owners that they, they take billions of dollars, well, millions of multi millions of dollars, hundred million dollars, whatever you want to say, in NFL fines. And they say they give it to charity. And you got old timers, $250 in pension and $2,500 in, in, in pension. In a multi-billion dollar industry that's no longer a non-profit. It's a profit, not a, a Donald Trump in, in office. Let that sink in for a minute, man. And, and know how deep it is. And people don't know how deep it is. People don't know shit about shit. It's Goodfellas Sports TV. Make sure you check us out. Very, very active every day. A lot of boxing, a lot of NFL, a lot of NBA, music and entertainment. Check our playlists out. We want to make a donation to the channel. That link's in the description as well. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Got a Facebook group as well. All those links in the description. And you can email me as well. Video requests, business sponsorships, or whatever you want You want to uh, chop it up about. You can DM me on social media as well. Mr. One Time for the One Time. Y'all know what the business is. Also, intro, instrumental in the link in the description as well. We gone.